this day in Montreal and there's a snowstorm outside. So today I'm gonna do my last bit of traveling around Montreal indoors in the uh, underground city. On the metro entrance that was uh, donated by France. These are the same ones that are in France. There's one in Montreal. This is the only one. It's Art Nouveau. Supposed to look natural, like natural lines, natural design. This is the artist's name here, Guimard. From Paris to Montreal. I guess this was installed in 1967. That was uh, Canada's centennial year. Another piece of public art up there. This is Victoria Square that this is in. Canada Steamship Lines building. That's what this place is. This is where I, what I was looking for. Square Victoria. I've got the older building here. Meeting, meeting the more modern building over on this side with a big skylight in between. Here's another piece of art that I was looking for. Got a beautiful fountain here. You can see it running off the edges. Water there. This is awesome. What a beautiful fountain. I'm going to throw a penny in, or a dime actually, I don't have a penny.
That was fun. Really cool little thing I found here. It's nice. Father Ice. From the heart of Siberia comes the legend of Father Ice. Lore has it a kind of gentle young girl was banished from her house to the frozen forest by her mean stepmother. As she began to freeze, a huge blizzard parted and Father Ice appeared. Charmed by her godliness, he showered her with diamonds. The wicked stepmother immediately ushered her own daughter out to reap the same benefits. This ill-tempered, spoiled, child disgusted Father Ice with her behavior. He waved his arm and froze her for eternity. Father Ice. This is St. Nicholas. St. Nicholas, Bishop of Myra. When you research the archives of history for From Whence Came Santa Claus, you invariably come across the name St. Nicholas. It appears to have all started here. St. Nicholas was an early Christian bishop who presided over the church in Myra, a city in Asia Minor. He lived from 280 AD to 346 AD. His remarkable childhood and his deep understanding of the church while still in youth led him to become a high church official, well known as the boy bishop. Many stories of good deeds were attributed to him in his lifetime and numerous miracles were bestowed to his name. His popularity is evidenced in the churches throughout Europe during those early centuries by the abundance of statuary and stained glass windows in his range. Written stories of St. Nicholas during his lifetime are few, for in accordance with the times, stories of his good deeds were passed on secretly by families from generation to generation. A little mystery in the beginning seemingly so appropriate for a character who has captured the hearts of so many. In different countries, St. Nicholas has also been known as Saint Nicholas, Saint Nicholas, Father Christmas, Père Noël, Bafana, Kris Kringle, and of course the popular name Santa Claus. Whatever the form of his name, he has remained a symbol of unselfish generosity, good cheer, and joy throughout the centuries. This is Pierre Lenoir. Kind of a scary looking dude. Got a basket on his back. Black Peter. This Santa, well, I've never associated him with being a type of Santa, but I'll just go with what the sign says here. This Santa helped Saint Nicholas in the handling of naughty children. He is not well known in America, but was very well known throughout Central Europe under many names such as Butz or Hans Trapp in the Germanic states and Père Foutard in France. As intimidating as he looked in his dark suit, he could turn quite jovial and benevolent 
when a disobedient child would recognize and change his or her behavior. He would then leave gifts instead of a birch rod switch or a lump of coal. Russian Saint Nicholas. Through the centuries, Christianity spread north and eastward into the lands that would eventually become Russia, with the acceptance of Christianity in Kievan in 988 AD. Along came the customs and pageantry of Christmas. The Ukrainian version of Saint Nicholas combines the elements of religions and folklore. By the 1800s, the Russian St. Nicholas was a figure carrying the punishment of birch switches as well as the reward of gifts symbolized by a Christmas tree. This is the one we're familiar with. North Pole Santa. This popular 20th century version depicts a jolly grandfatherly Santa that resides in the North Pole. He receives letters from children and often checks up on them to see if they have been naughty or nice. He is supported by his own factory complete with elves and flying reindeers and Christmas Eve he delivers gifts throughout the world. On Christmas morning he takes a well-earned rest while Mrs. Claus takes good care of him. Just past these Santas here is an actual piece of the Berlin Wall. It's a, a big chunk of the Berlin Wall here. This is all in en français. I don't know what it says. That's too bad. No English on here. piece of history right here in this fancy shopping mall between two buildings. I never would have guessed. Montreal is full of surprises. This is the Bavarian Santa. The Lutheran Church in Bavaria was dominant in expressing its own religious meaning of St. Nicholas and Christmas. This Santa was thought of only as a messenger. He took children's requests up to heaven and then descended to earth using his umbrella and bearing gifts from the angels to give to the children. That's what he looks like. He holds an umbrella. Who's this? Medieval Santa. 12th century Europe was a time of castles and kings, wizards, jesters, and gypsies. During the Christmas season, castle gates were left open. Holiday travelers on foot and horseback were made welcome, especially Santa. Medieval Santa traveled through the countryside by foot, delivering his gifts from hamlet to town and spreading good cheer. Sometimes his load was very heavy. Folklore said he would be seen accompanied by a merry band of gnomes. Uh, 
that's really cool. First century? That's this century. This Santa is keeping up with the times, for his job has become international. Complete with all the latest technology in communication and transportation, he rides into the new century in his sleek ultra hovercraft. Equipped with a cellular phone, Santa keeps in constant touch with his North Pole headquarters while delivering gifts all around the world. Santa has also his silver thermal flight suit for long midnight journey. With the aid of his computerized disc of nice children, Santa continues to reward the good children throughout the entire world. Wow, computerized disc. His image has changed in such a way that you notice it right away. Gone is the red nose, his pipe and his belly full of jelly. But make no mistake, for still on his head is a bright, brilliant red. It's the same old hat, not missing a thread. This mall's pretty cool. Queen Victoria in Victoria Square. She's in silhouette though, because the light's behind her. Now I'm back underground again headed toward the central station of Via Real, close to the hotel. I did have to go outside a couple times though, so this underground city isn't completely underground. <laughs> 